Hello and welcome back to this project-based introduction to blueprinting inside of Unreal Engine 5. This video is going to cover the trigger volume and timeline node. We're inside of the blueprint that we built from part one, the BP Mesh Transform 2, and quick review of what we made on the first one. Inside of our viewport, we set up a static mesh, which is going to be our test door, as well as a spherical trigger, which is going to be our collider trigger volume. Inside of the event graph, off of the event begin play node, we took our mesh, got the relative transformations from the mesh, created variables off of the location, rotation, and scale, then created variables off of each of the parameters within the location, rotation, and scale. We then categorized those into their own subcategories within the variables so that inside of the editor with our blueprint, we have the three categories, location, rotation, and scale set up and ready to go to be changed by the artist or level designer. The next step in our process here, and before we get started, I'm gonna highlight all these. I'm gonna hit C and create a comment. And we're gonna call this initialize variables PSR, which stands for position, scale, and rotation. That way, if I come back to this blueprint in the future, I'll know exactly what I was doing. Now that we have our initialized variables set up and commented, we're gonna begin working on the trigger volume. Select the trigger volume within the component tab on the left, move over to the details tab on the right hand side, and we're going to scroll down all the way to the bottom and you'll see there's list of events. And the two that we are concerned with are on component begin overlap and on component end overlap. So I will click plus on the begin overlap, select trigger again, and hit plus on the end overlap. And we have these two nodes ready to go for us and set up. The next step is I am going to create our timeline node drag off here, type in timeline, and add timeline. We'll just keep it as its generic name for timeline. Inside the timeline node, I want you to double click, and we are presented with this. Okay, nothing is in here right now. As you can see, we have track, or we can add a track, the length of the track, use keyframes, autoplay, loop, replicated, ignore time dilation, and various tick group settings. The main thing you're concerned with is we are going to create a float track. There are many types of tracks. There's float, vector, event, and color. This tutorial will focus around using a float track. We have a new track, and I'm going to name this alpha. That will become apparent in the later part of this video. Length, I want this to be one second. Now you can see our timeline has been trimmed. On the axis, the horizontal axis, I'm gonna click and I'm gonna hold shift and click, which drops a keyframe. I'm gonna hold shift and click and add another keyframe. Now with the first keyframe selected, we see we have a time and a value. I want that right at zero, zero, zero time with zero value. The next keyframe, I want that at time one with a value of one. And there are these two buttons here, zoom fit to horizontal, zoom fit to vertical. Now I have my timeline, my animation timeline set up in here. I can then select by holding shift, both keyframes, right click and change these to auto, which will be a cubic interpolation. And that is what we call an ease in and an ease out. So at the beginning, it's slowly accelerating. In the middle, we're traveling at a constant or linear pace and at the end we're slowly decelerating to a stop. Once you have that timeline set up with your alpha track and the two keyframes, you can leave it constant. I prefer the easy ease variation. I'm going to close that down and we are now presented with this alpha track here, float, single precision. The next thing you're gonna to wanna to do is take the end overlap and we're gonna have this hooked into reverse. 
When the player overlaps the trigger volume, we will play the animation. When they walk outside of the volume, we will reverse the animation from wherever the track had stopped at. In the next video, we'll go over setting up and initializing the location changes within the blueprint. Thanks for watching. Bye now.